Can you guys hear me? Yep, gotcha. Yep. One, two, three. Yeah. Okay. Five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. The horse managed to sit in the chair. That's pretty impressive. Well trained horse. Okay, I think we can go ahead and get started. <laughs> uh, so, um, I don't see any additions to the list that I had put together. Awesome. Um, Great meeting. Have a good weekend, everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, materials uh, has gone out and has been picked up by a couple of the of you. Thank you very much. Um, oh, who's released it? Just curious. Akua, I know that. Okay. Cool. Cool VL has has a version, and um, Naran has a version in his new viewer that he's re redubbed his viewer Black something Dragon, <laughs> Black Dragon. Uh, so those those builds, uh, I believe, are materials enabled. Um, you will want to get the fixes that are in three six one, which went to release yesterday. Um, so uh, and and there are more fixes coming, but they're less urgent than the ones that were in the. That's pretty much the news with respect to materials. Um, that's part of what we can do. Um, uh, what's in three? There, there were some fixes. Um, there was a, a an important fix to occlusion handling, especially if I recall correctly, it was for occlusion when there are really, really large objects. Um, it tended to get them wrong. Cause um, things not to be displayed that ought to have been. Um, and that's that's going. I, I don't have any news about server-side appearance that you shouldn't already have heard, but I'll repeat it anyway, uh, which is to say that we're still looking at um, a target of rollout the week of uh, uh, beginning to enable in a release channel, that is uh, server-side appearance on the server side um, the week of July the 8th, 9th, and so on, after the after the holiday. It's possible that be partially because of the holiday that could that could uh, that could slip a week or so but um, and, and it won't be sooner than that for sure. Um, but the um, but that we're, we're in the home stretch now we're 
really we really mean it. So yes, um, and we appreciate the efforts all of you have been making to get people to update. Um, I am hoping that in the next uh, day or two, I will start getting a regular report about that in, that integrates your versions in that gives us a global picture of what percentage of the user population is running uh, SSA compatible viewers. Um, I don't have that aggregate number right now, but uh, it's we're, we're working on that. Uh, so, uh, one of the things that um, I'm planning on doing for uh, Phoenix and to a lesser degree Firestorm uh, users um, so we've got a couple of resources at our disposal for uh, notifying and communicating with our users globally. Um, message of the day is one. However, uh, not everybody reads that. Um, with Phoenix starting Monday, we're going to change the login page. Um, sorry, I think we're going to wipe out destinations just so that we can have some really big, bold text. You need to update your viewer. Um, and we're going to do this in stages, so on Phoenix starting with the login page, then probably a couple days later, maybe a week, we'll do, we've got a notification, we've got two notification systems uh, built into uh, Phoenix and Firestorm, we'll be utilizing those as well. So it's going to be a gradual thing as we get closer to uh, the 9th. Um, I would love to know on, say, a two-day basis or a three-day basis, what kind of effect that's having if that's possible for you to get if if that new report is developed on schedule i'll have that i'll have it on a daily basis in fact Wonderful. even more frequently than a daily basis um we're experimenting with a new statistics system and i believe the the new report is being driven off of that and we get it in in uh much closer to real time than than uh, the previous system was capable of I will let you know. Um, I'll, I'll I'll send an update um, to the announce list uh, about where we stand when I know. Okay. Uh, but uh, I, I should I should check in with them about that today and see if they've made any progress. But I think it's it, I know it's in progress because the person developing the report sent me a couple of questions yesterday and said. What do I do about such and such? Uh, and uh, so, so there's there's something going on. We'll see how how quickly we get results. Um, but once we start getting the results, we should we should have a pretty clear picture of, of where we are um, in the in the process. Uh, oh, that's that's happening. Um, let's see. Other stuff that's happening. Um, Vivox upgrade, uh, as Sovereign pointed out, that's in the pipeline, and um, that's probably one of the things that will go to a viewer release candidate almost immediately after we switch to the new version management system. Um, I didn't put that on the list, but we, we're currently anticipating that being uh, also the week after the holiday. Um, so uh, that's actually all ready to go. It's just that we're too close to the holiday to be turning things like to, to turning things on that are that sweeping. Uh, we're we're already in our no change window for for Fourth of July. Um, uh, let's see, interest list uh, stuff is coming. They did. I don't think they've made that viewer repo public yet. I'm not sure why not, but that should be happening shortly. Um, so ETA on that is very soon then? I believe we'll see a project viewer for that um, as uh, right after the holiday. And, and a, a, you know, maybe even a beta. And how and about the, the server-side appearance? polish code that dump that you guys had that's 
not going to be out right away. I don't know, Nix, you, you have some idea what, what the story is with Sunshine Development Branch? I pushed another update, um, I think it was earlier this week, um, but it's still under active development. We haven't started uh, our stabilization pass yet. There are still a couple of small features we're going to be adding and bugs we're going to be fixing, so it's not ready for, uh, it's not getting ready for a release yet. More than four weeks away? Away from beta? Away from when it'll be available for us, for third party viewers. Uh, well, the, the source is available now if you want to start doing pre merges, but it's not ready uh, for release viewers. That's going to uh, take at least another few sprints. I don't have a solid timeline for that yet. Okay, just because we're our next release will be 442. And that is intending to pick up the interest list uh, and the sunshine drop. And uh, while we do that, we'll be working on Chewy. And hopefully, if the timeline is right, we'll be able to get Chewy and materials it right after that. Yeah, it's it's still going to be a while before the um, uh, post three five one sunshine uh, code is going to be ready to roll out, um, but. As we get closer to that, uh, I will keep you guys up to date. Okay, thank you. Right, so the um, Vivox upgrade is, is coming, um, and I believe I, I heard from them recently that they have yet another update behind that one that's that's coming, so I, I'm not sure when that'll happen, but um, we're, we're going to be looking at that. Um, interest list is on the way. I checked with Baker this morning, and Baker informs me that he has finished with all the other problems he had been uh, tasked with um, before being able to do group bands, and he is now officially supposed to be working on group bands, and he is actually doing it. So he hopes to have an update for you at our next meeting on what viewer side changes will be needed. So, yay, Baker, and whoever assigns his priorities. Um, we'll see. Um, hopefully that will be coming soon. Um, and that's what I had on my list. So now we're at the... Open, open, uh, open agenda part. Uh, Nix, did you get um, the uh, what was her name? Taz from yesterday I was having a failure to resolve appearance. Uh, I, be, I believe Worley uh, sent me a link to a JIRA. Uh, I haven't had a chance to look at it yet, um, okay. but I did receive it. Okay, so we got we got a couple of... Let's see, is there any word on when chain set blah, blah, blah will be added to the Testylvania regions? Um, yeah, I thought that was supposed to have happened yesterday, but it, if it didn't, then we'll have to poke at that. Uh, which uh, change set, Oz? In, on the um, agenda page here, I'll... Riverside part of Sun 74. Yeah, uh, there were some uh, merge issues with getting it up to date with the latest trunk, so that's not going to be going out until after. To test Sun, the Riverside fix, 
uh, the Aditi regions are up to date. Uh, so feel free to test um, Phoenix against those. We'll be sure to send Jess our new. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll find something wrong with it. Uh, why was Rebake uh, removed? Or was that intentional? Uh, Rebake was not removed. Uh, Kim Kim's, um, and, and in fact, QA, my RQA has been complaining that uh, there's no Rebake. It seemed to work for me yesterday. As far as I am aware, the UI option is still there, and it resubmits your it's appearance request. Okay, so. I don't know where that came from then. I'm finding rebake doesn't work either. I have to do a tech refresh here to work. I don't know if that's souped up to the same thing. Which Jira, Takoda? So the other new thing on the agenda page is do Linden Lab have any stats for the percentage of sessions that have ALM enabled, advanced lighting mode slash deferred rendering? Um, uh, the last stats I saw were that it's that uh, it was just under 30 percent um, had it uh, enabled. Um, I'm actually asking for uh, getting getting more current numbers than that. Um, we currently believe that something like 75% in, in rough terms could turn it on without it being a problem. So uh, Is that 75% uh, based on uh, the 10 frames per second uh, standard that, uh, that had been used? No, I think it's higher than that. I would hope it's higher than that. We we think that you could get that, that that you'd have a reasonable reasonable performance. Where reasonable is not forty frames per second, but um. and is that uh, yeah? Well, I I mean, being, I, I mean, being I, in a busy it, sim or an empty sim, do you know? I th there there are of course lots of other factors involved, right? So, I don't know. Yeah, that's about the slipperiest stat you can come up with, but it's the one users care about. Well, I think I think a bunch of things that are are. Um, yeah, I don't even. Money. What do you get when you turn ALM on? Just curious. I'm pretty certain I get a crash. <laughs> Oh, lovely. <laughs> On this Mac. <laughs> no comment, then. <laughs> Bonnie has an older machine. Upgrade. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting about eight right now. Um, 
with ALM on. So, but that's, you know, since I'm not moving around, that's perfectly reasonable. Plus you have a lot of avatars in here. We're, we're, one of the things we're doing on the, on the maintenance, the, uh, on the materials maintenance branch, which is, you know, accumulating more maintenance fixes, uh, is we're going to be doing some profiling of the shaders and seeing what we can improve. Well, I understand so. you guys have already made some pretty big uh, strides in performance on with ALM, no? It is significantly better than it was, um, but we're we're doing another round. Yeah, so so uh Worley keeps reminding me. Yay, Worley. I, I have a very off topic question, more out of curiosity that you probably can't answer. Um is there any way to that you could let us know how much of a load we're putting on the asset server when we put a release out and we're telling everybody to clear their cache? Well, the, the viewer does a clash clear anyways on, on an upgrade. I, I, I'm just curious as to how much of an effect we're going to have on the asset server when we put a release out, quite honestly. I don't know that I've ever seen... When are, you, when are you putting a release out? What's the date? Um, two nights ago. <laughs> they, they just did it. Uh, just Wednesday. Wednesday night. Okay. Let me... Uh... At 6 p.m. SL time. Um, and the reason why it, the question is being asked is because at, at first people are, are logging in and their inventory is loading fine, but as more and more people, and we can track this on our website because how many people are on the site downloading, um, and it seems that the more people are downloading, the more people are complaining that their inventories won't load. And we're just wondering if that could be an accumulative uh, cause by um, a lot of people installing Firestorm and, and pulling, um, doing inventory fetches when they log in. Is that being slowed down or hampered because of the volume of Firestorm users? Well, that's a whole different system. That's not the asset server. Uh, correct. And that's actually um, changes the answer. Uh, actually, I'm interested. So I'll actually see if I can dig something up. Um, my casual, my off-the-cuff response would be that the asset system itself wouldn't be bothered. Uh, we've got an enormous amount of headroom, actually, due to circumstances I won't go into. Um, so that the asset <laughs> system itself probably won't be bothered. But the inventory system is is on the edge, literally in several places, and that could actually be a tipping point. Yeah. Um, to well, clarify, if you're, for... if you're able to, to look from Wednesday on, because we, we still have a pretty large volume of updaters grabbing it even now. The, the time bracket's good. I'll, um, that will help me. I'll see what I can do. Yeah. So the, the, to, just to clarify, you know, the, uh, the inventory system is what keeps track of what's in your individual inventories and what's in other things. The... the that it's just pointers to the real assets, and so the the, the ah, asset so system it's like is like links, right, sort of. Yeah, it's, yeah. I know, I know what you mean. Right. Yeah, so it but, it tells you where to go fetch the real asset. It it but it, and and but the inventory system is you know is is the index to the asset system. The asset system is flat has no concept of permissions and ownership. The inventory system is a hairy, bushy tree with permissions and ownership and rules and everything else. So one's all structure, one's all is inactive content. 
where all the content is. And a failure okay. to fetch inventory would be caused by the inventory system then? Yes, like when you, other things. Then, then you clean cache and relog. It doesn't actually touch the assets. It only downloads the directory, if you will. It doesn't right. download assets. Okay, so we're putting a load on a system that's already sitting on the edge then. It's sitting yeah, on the edge in some ways. The um, difference is that um, the inventory is partitioned out to the sim hosts. I, I actually have often been curious why it is that people insist that you, you have to do a clean install and wipe your caches so much. In fact, it, wiping your caches so much is, is it's, it's, it's tough on the rest of the system. Um, <laughs> and and it, it, it's not obvious to me that it should be a problem. I mean, unless the unless the years. cache code itself is is horribly buggy, which you know, it granted, has been actually it has been Inven at different times in the past. Inventory cache is really really buggy, and you have a very common question. You know, I have just logged in, and I have twenty thousand items in my inventory, and only five thousand are showing now. And at that point, the only thing you can say: clean cache relog. It's, and what you it say, Oz, is absolutely correct, but um, our history is just so checkered. Um, the caches really have been buggy in multiple different ways, and it shouldn't be that way. And cache would be a reliable cache that you could keep from session to session would be such an obvious win. And um, uh, I just wish we delivered on that a little better. Yep. Okay, the, the, the reason this uh, I, I'm asking this is we're, we're trying to educate the users now about how much of an impact that they're having on, uh, on on Second Life itself with the things that they do in Second Life. And I'd really like to be able to give them accurate information. Well, we've been educating for a long time now um, not to clear your cache unless you have something obviously wrong with it. But the exception to that rule is... Uh, we found when there's a viewer update because inventory just doesn't load um, from one uh, version to another. And um, uh, so sometimes clearing cache is really the only way to get them to get for them to get their inventory to load. And the trouble is, is if they upgrade to a new version and their inventory doesn't load, um, they blame that version and then they roll back to an older version. And uh, so while we try to tell people, because a lot of people think that clearing cache fixes everything, and every time they have any kind of problem, they can go ahead and clear cache. We've been educating not to do that for ever, um, but still, it's it's somewhat important during installs. But like Rolly said, the most important thing with uh, we found in, in installing isn't even the cache; it's more the settings. Uh, Nix, you have no idea. That, that's that been the most common response when people have a problem. Oh, I'm experiencing lag. They don't even know what kind of lag, and somebody says, clear your cache and relog. Well, it's the relog that fixes them 90% of the time. I've done a lot of workshops for uh, Second Life models in, you know, people who do the runway thing, and they have this genuine it's practically a rule that before uh, every catwalk you have to clear your cache and relog and that's going to make your viewer faster so you don't you know crash <laughs> and in actuality they're they're degrading their performance hugely it's horrible and when i tell them no don't do that um i, I get a lot of resistance because people are convinced that clearing cache fixes everything Yeah, we have people who clear clash every login and swear by it. Oh, you know, maybe what we as a group should figure out a way to do is uh, is to is to create a project to to work out what the problems with the caching are and fix them. That would be fantastic. <laughs> I think a lot of it would need to be server side. And if we could move... No, by definition, the cache is all viewer side. It is uh, viewer bugs that are most uh, 
and it's it, it's very difficult you know i have looked and you know i have a uh, 25000 items inventory and cash never corrupts for me and my partner has similar cash and she has to clear cash like every third day because on login she has a uh, marginal internet connection so maybe under some circumstances cash gets nuked when the, the connection is not good and but in, in any case it would be a great win if we could uh, figure out a way to fix it uh okay so are we tripping over some of the same http errors that monty's been struggling with all this time? Well, that sounds that sounds more like it's the UDP updates that are getting lost. Well, but you know, you you, you got to remember, monty has been dealing with uh, with uh, crappy routers and and things getting hosed up that way, uh, causing all sorts of HTTP weirdnesses. Right, but uh, HTTP it, usually it, doesn't. It, while it sometimes fails, it usually doesn't fail without letting you know that it failed. UDP has the marvelous quality that you lose things and you don't know you lost them. No, but this is some something buggy in the cache system itself because you know there is. I cannot imagine a, a communication problem that would cause that if I have like twenty five thousand items in my inventory and I relog and on the next login I have five thousand. That shouldn't happen if the cache is working correctly. And that happens frequently. Yeah, the, the the best workaround we found personally for that, well, as a team for that, is that uh, get the individual to clear just their inventory cache file uh, and leave the rest of it alone. Yeah, but that, that's the one that's uh, problematic. That's the one causing load. You know, the, the regular assets, the textures and stuff, they are cached on so many levels. Simulators have their own squid proxies with those. So they don't tax the asset system that much. It's the inventory one that is centralized and cannot be distributed that much to local web, uh, to local regions. So that's the one causing uh, the load issues. So maybe if we figured out why the inventory uh, uh, cache is having so many issues, we could uh, minimize That would be a problem. great win, yes. Well, maybe that, maybe that would be a good project for us to find a way to collectively organize. Um, well, and the whole caching system seems to be very mysterious and mystical and, and difficult to understand fully. In fact, I, we've had developers uh, at different times looking at um, at the cache system and coming up with completely op opposing opinions on, on how it works. And it doesn't mean one or the other is wrong. It, it just means it's very difficult to understand for some reason. It's difficult to reproduce, too, you know. This, this too, yeah. bug uh, with, uh, with inventory caching was uh, something... I cannot even discern the pattern in which it happens, you know. It happens for some people more often than others, that I can tell you, because I never have to do it. And uh, for some people, they have to do it every couple of days to get their inventory. Who um, designed the cash system? Maybe you should hire him back. <laughs> or actually, no, maybe not. No, we should not. <laughs> yeah. actually, the problem Objection! Is, the problem is that every time we introduce a new object, someone decides that this is an, an excellent opportunity to investigate new caching schemes. And that's oh, the problem. Right. Every single one of them is, has been a custom job to some extent. And um, none of them are actually implemented reliably. Sounds um, like avatar appearance. Uh, it sounds Up like everything, actually. Yeah. I'm going through mesh right now, and um, I'm seeing certain things. Textures, I saw certain other things, et cetera, et cetera. It's every mesh is still is young. Unique. It shouldn't be that bad. Going bald quickly, are you, Monty? I am, actually. Um, <laughs> 
stop pulling it out, man. <laughs> and on that subject, um, this is a heads up. The um, I have two server releases to do, and then there will be a um, uh, well, a new project viewer under the new scheme, which will have um, a, a major mesh update as far as HTTP goes. And uh, I'm trying to get that going as quickly as possible. So expect something there. Wonderful. Okay, well, that, that should be something we should all be thinking about, how to, how well, to like I tackle. Said, we, we have actually invested some time trying to figure out what's causing it. And, and also the whole thing of, um, you know, why, do, why is it when we have users upgrade and they don't clear their settings, they end up with problems and completely random problems that, including even performance issues, and and if we have them wipe settings and install without you know with fresh settings it's all fixed, uh, and others don't. I've never had to do a settings wipe. I've done it for testing purposes and whatnot, but I've never had a problem. But we have other users who have to clear the settings on every reinstall or every update, and we have no real can't figure out why. One one bit of code you might be interested in, and I'll. I'll try to highlight it when it gets near the release, the viewer release channel, but it's, it's en route, um, is uh, we're going to eliminate this business of using a different settings file based on what channel name is being used. So we're just going to use settings.xml for everything. Um, so when you change from a beta viewer to a release viewer, you won't be losing, oh, gaining or God. losing settings. For developers, this is going to be a major win. <laughs> um, I, I think it'll also actually be a, a, a... Because we constantly get bug reports where people say, you know, I tried this new viewer you just put out, and it wiped out all my settings. Well, yeah, actually, it just used a different settings file. Um, so that that change is in the pipeline. Um, yeah, it does have some good and some bad, but um, be watching for the bad because it's coming. Well, we're actually in pretty good shape there. That'd be good for support too. But we're in good shape there with our new, uh, with the backup feature. Yeah, we've got a um, settings export and import feature, which is solid gold. It's absolutely incredible. It's flawed a little bit, but it's still solid gold. Uh, yes, that's the problem yeah, okay, with the you... Windows installer, you know. They should just uh, drop the, do you want to run this viewer now from, from oh, the installer? Oh, that's bad, yeah. Uh, we, that would be nice because that you can't, if you run it from the installer, uh, it's just bad. You just shouldn't do that. That option should be removed. Didn't we make a modification to ours that uh, would drop that and then prove when it launches? Uh, if we did, it hasn't made it into even our nightly I don't think so because I still get it when I when I run an installer I still get it oh, okay and I, and I know a lot of people will click yes because they're installing it so that they can run it so they'll just click yes and and then they don't know why everything's screwed up what was the issue but for running it from the installer yeah, when the it, when the installer finally finishes, it asks if you would like to run Firestorm. Well, even if it's the Linen Viewer, it, it asks if you would like to run the viewer now. And if you click yes, um, for some reason, it, it doesn't seem to initialize the settings files or something. It's uh, it's the reason is that uh, in order to install a viewer, you need to get uh, administrative rights. So that's what uh, the installer does when you run it. It basically switches user to admin. So uh -huh. it can so it can write to to the program files which are protected under Windows for normal users. So when it uh, when it finishes installing and you say yes, run it, it actually runs it not as you as the logged in user. It runs it as administrator, 
and then the settings go to a, for only that one run will go to a different location than your normal settings. Yeah, well, we don't have seems like a bug that would be pretty straightforward to fix. Because there, there isn't really an installer on Mac, so to speak. I don't know if uh, the installer, the NSIS, has the ability to drop the admin privileges at the end. Maybe that should be investigated. Or just remove the option to run it from the installer. I'll I'll poke at the person who does that stuff here. See if I can find something out. Um, following up on a previous item, I just got um, some data on our inventory system. So at the very back end, it's all been quiet and predictable over the past uh, week. There was uh, no jump midweek of any noticeable amount. So it looks really like um, in between, somewhere between the two endpoints, something may be going wrong. And there are a lot of places where that can happen. It's good to know then, though, that we're not, you know, creating any additional load, then that's good. Oz, can we kill these media on a prim signs? Every time my mouse hovers over one of them, I get this great big text bar across my window. It drives me nuts. You could, you could turn off media on a prim, then you get just annoying signs that say you need to turn on media on a prim to see this. <laughs> Either way is annoying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jess, that was part of the design of spec for the thing. Yeah, I know, I know. And and well, also, there's room for improvement here. Um, more chair resers. Imperative. Uh, I can... Uh, what, you don't like people sitting on your... No, well, and, people... and it takes forever <laughs> for everyone to get seated. That's because uh, you will teleport at, one, at once, you know, you should space it out. <laughs> well, that's because we leave... Because right before this meeting, we have a support meeting. Um, which we do every weekly. So basically, as soon as the sport meeting's over, we all end up here and overload everything. Well, I, I can I can talk to Timmy and see if uh, if that's doable. Four resers would be good. Yeah, I, I actually I actually kind of buy that idea. Well, anything else before we wrap up? Program. I haven't even looked at the scripts for this. I, I have no idea. Um, so I have nothing else. Okay. Uh, in that case, we are adjourned. Uh, you're not. You've been ordered to remain here. I, I will hang around. <laughs> Have a good weekend, everybody. <laughs> oh, as I've updated my... Uh... Oh, that's a good idea. Why didn't I think of that? You, Mr. Sign, are blacklisted. Great idea, mister. That worked.
It's a silly side note. I, I put my graphics on ultra here. Oh damn, the table was linked to those signs. I'm still getting uh, six frames per second. Ultra with everything ramped up. On which machine? On uh, my Pentium D915 with the 260 in it. How did you manage that, Ed? I'm on seven, seven frames per second here, 32 meter draw distance, no ALM, Avatar imposters at three or something like that. Atrocious performance. Well, I have everything, including the uh, uh, reflections, screen space reflections turned on on uh, Ultra. So everything's maxed out, and I've been getting six plus frames per second here. Well, I'm set on high on a 660 Ti, um, and I'm getting 12 frames per second. And if I enable ALM, I'm getting seven frames per second on a 660. Um, I am on a GTX 260, and I am on Ultra with shadows and all the other shinies, and I'm getting 18 frames a second. So the 260 is the card to be on. I still have a 260 somewhere. I'm getting 60 frames a second. I don't know what, why you... And I am on a 4.5 gigahertz CPU. I'm, uh, I am on Singularity with uh, LM enabled, but no shadows. And but what's your uh, system? Yeah. What's your card? It's a 260, surprisingly. It's a 260? <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a great card. But I, I, I probably get 60 frames a second because I have a really, really fast CPU. I have the overclocked i7 running on 4.5 GHz. Oh, Must be nice. So, yeah, anybody uh, want to buy a dual quad core Mac with a GTX 570? The, the viewer compiles in 8 minutes from scratch on this, on this system. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm still on a Pentium D915. So, the, yeah. the viewer seems to be awfully CPU bound, so so you get actually more bang uh, to get faster CPU than to spend extra amount of money on uh, super fancy graphics. Yeah. 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 I, I'm coming to the conclusion that's the bottleneck in my system. Is you get uh, a much more benefit from the uh, CPU. I'm getting uh, 20 frames per second. Um, actually, you usually get a higher overall frames on. An Intel CPU, just because they have higher single-threaded performance than most AMD chips. And I am unfortunately on an AMD chip. Oh, I am I, uh, overclocking. So much overclocking. I had uh, this uh, GTX 260 from my old system, and when I was building a new one, I was thinking, you know, I should just spend all my money on the fastest CPU I can afford, and I'll reuse this GTX 260. That worked well. Uh, you know, with all these avatars here, NALM enabled on high setting, not ultra high, I get 60, 70 frames a second. Yeah, if I turn off um, shadows and ambient occlusion, I get around uh, 40, 50. I'm going to get a GTX 760 though, because woo, shiny new graphics card. Which actually outperforms the uh, GTX 660 Ti. Yeah, I've got the uh, Titan. On a 260M. It's really not that great. The funny thing was, when I upgraded from my 260 to the 660 Ti, it changed my second life like mad. It was a huge difference, but suddenly now I'm not seeing that performance increase, at least where I'm standing right now. It's because the uh, all these avatars here. Well, I was able to go to Ahern. Um, when I first got it installed, it, I went to Ahern, there was probably about 40, 50 avatars there. 
um, all trolling, of course. Um, and I had my graphics completely maxed, everything, shadows, <laughs> everything, you name it. And I was still getting like 30 frames per second, which is amazing. And there's certainly less avatars here right now and less content to render in. Uh, and I'm only getting 12, and I'm not even on full. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand. I'm now, I'm now up to just under 10 frames per second, and I've pulled uh, avatar imposters right down to 1. And my audience is 32 meters, and I'm barely getting 10 frames per second at the moment. And I don't know what the issue is here at all. Oh yeah, what really just said. Mm-hmm. How about it? I don't I don't I don't care about beacons. I just want Jonathan Yap. All right, I gotta go. Have a good weekend, everybody. Later, Jeff. Well, I'm only one step up from a P4, really. One generation of processors up from a P4. Yeah, CPU upgrades will uh, really improve your... Yeah, problem is uh, Q6600 is uh, about the best processor I could realistically get without going to the extremes. And they're ridiculously priced. For for an old processor, you're still looking at 200, 250 US oh, dollars. Intel processors actually go up in price as they get older, just because they they become harder to find. Yeah, and but some people, I'm gonna, you you really need like the, yeah. you know heart and lung surgery, yeah. motherboard motherboard memory and CPU.